Okay, so let's continue building our site, and right now we're going to concentrate on these uh, buttons right here, these menu items. So let me go back to the code editor, and I'm right now located in lecture 32 after folder. I'm looking at index.html, and I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to right below where our navbar header, this one right here. So let's let uh, Sublime Text help me out here and show me where that ends. Right here is where it ends. I actually can remove this line and just put it right here. So I need to put it right below where the navbar header ends because that's now not part of the uh, navbar header that's going to show up when the main menu collapses and kind of disappears and only is accessible through this toggle button. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and paste some code that I pre-baked and let's go over the code. Okay, so the first thing you see is this is the div that contains all of our menus, all of our navigation buttons. And you see the ID that I gave this div is collapsible nav. Well, you've seen this before. There it is, collapsible nav. And the way we specify or do a selector API type of ID is we put a pound sign in front of it. So very much the same as CSS. So here we're saying I want to select pound sign collapsible nav, which means ID uh, that's collapsible nav. Well, the ID collapsible nav is right here. And the collapse.js, the plugin from Bootstrap, will use this information right here to know where to target its collapsing kind of behavior and functionality. And it will know to target it right here. There's a couple of required classes that I need to put in here. One is collapse, another one is navbar collapse. And again, if you look at the Bootstrap documentation, this is what they tell you to put on the collapsible menu. Okay, so that's our container div. It's going to contain all of our menu items. Next, the way we're going to display the menu items, which is very common practice to do, is to create an unordered list. And we're going to give this unordered list an ID called nav list, and we're going to target that later for styling. And we're going to give it a, a few classes. One is nav, navbar nav, uh, and navbar right. Well, nav and navbar nav is basically saying that I am going to be a component of our navigation bar or navigation. And these are the classes that basically turn our unordered list into this nicely done menu right there in the navigation bar. And the last class here is navbar right. Well, that class is very similar to that, those classes pull right, pull left, except this one is specifically for the navbar. So this is navbar right means I want it still in the navigation bar, but I want it to be pulled to the right. I want it to float all the way to the right. So if I actually look at our design, these navigation menus, they're not sitting next to the name of the restaurant. They're sitting all the way to the right, and actually they're aligned to the right. And the way that's done is through this navbar right right class. Okay, so the next task is is to start listing these li items. And each li item is going to have an a element, a href element that is going to point to some page usually within the website. And not only is it going to point to it, it's going to say things like menu, so that's going to be the actual name of the button, but right next to it is going to have the span with a special couple of classes, glyph icon, glyph icon, cutlery. And what these classes do is they're able to bring in what's called an icon font. And an icon font is basically a vector-based image that is able to behave in the same way that, that a font would behave. In other words, you could size it, you could colorize it, give it a color, basically use it the same way you use a font, except it's usually some sort of vector-based shape. Well, in this case, glyph icon or glyph icon and glyph icon cutlery will give us kind of a fork and a knife, and that will be our menu. Also notice, we're putting a break between the actual icon and the word menu. But we're not just putting a break, we're putting a class on it and we're saying hidden XS, which means I want this break to go away when the screen size is extra small. And the reason that is, is, is if you could take a look, uh, right now uh, the cutlery is on top and the menu is right on the bottom. Well, the way it's achieved is through that break element. When we actually do the expanding of the menu, when you use the toggle button, I don't want the icon to be on top and make this button super thick. Instead, I want them to lay out the icon and the menu or the, the words for the menu. I want them to be flat. I want them to be horizontal. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and hide the break element at that screen size.
And basically the same code is done for about in awards. And this is just again a glyph icon. Now, where do you get these glyph icons? Well, actually a whole bunch of them already come by default with Bootstrap. And if you look at the Bootstrap documentation, you can actually look at these glyph icons right here. If you go to components and glyph icons, and you can have a whole bunch of different blue icons and it will tell you exactly how to specify it. So in this case, for example, it's glyph icon space glyph icon star. And that's the glyph icon that you're going to get. And you are able to, again, style it however you want in terms of color, in terms of sizing and so on. And just like a regular font, even if you make it super big, the shape of it is still going to be very sharp and clear. The one last item here that I want you to take a look at is this last LI, which contains our phone number. And there are a couple of things here. Number one is I'm telling it tell uh, with a colon and the phone number. And what that's going to do is that if actually somebody clicks on it or taps on it, they will trigger the phone to try to call it. So if let's say you have calling uh, program installed on your computer in the regular desktop, they'll trigger that. Or if you're in a mobile phone, this type of uh, setup will trigger the phone to try to call or use its phone feature to call. Now notice what we're doing here. We're setting up this LI to be hidden XS, meaning when the screen size is going to be super small, I want this phone number hidden. Phone number together with the words we deliver. Just the whole thing, I want the whole thing hidden. So why would we want to hide this element when the screen is extra small? Well, let me show you. When the size of my browser is mobile, meaning I'm on a mobile phone, I don't want the phone number to show up as part of this menu. I actually want it to show up right across the entire width of the browser, of the mobile browser, and I want to have actually pretty drastically different styling for it. And that is why I want to hide this element altogether when we're at the screen size of extra small. Okay, so time to save the page and make sure that we have our browser sync started. Let's start our browser sync and let's switch to the browser. We'll go to the HTML and now we see that we have some work to do in terms of styling, but the menu about and awards and we deliver and the phone number are all showing up just nicely. Let's go ahead and add some styling to the navigation. We'll go to our CSS folder and we'll open up the styles.css and we'll scroll down to the available space here. And I already have some code that I've pre-baked, especially for this. So let's go ahead and paste that and I'll go over this code right now. So the styling starts with targeting this nav list, which is an element with an ID nav list. Let's go ahead and orient ourselves a little bit. Where's this ID nav list? Well, the ID nav list is this UL. So the entire UL is the nav list, and that's kind of our anchor from where we're starting to style the rest of them. So here, all we're doing is just giving the entire menu a bit of a margin on top. So the whole entire menu will just move down. Every link within the menu is going to have a color, which is that maroon color that we basically are using throughout the entire site. That's the color of the napkins of the restaurant. And we're also going to center it. If you remember, the menu, the text at least of those menu items was a little bit shifted. I think it was shifted to the left but or to the right. But anyway, we need to make sure it is aligned center. And we also need to let the users know when they move the mouse over the menu that their mouse is in fact over the clickable region. So so therefore, we're going to do this nav list a hover, and we're going to give it a little bit of a like a light, close to white type of a color as a background. And the text of those menu items was a little bit too small, so we're going to increase it at about 1.8 m's. So that's about 80% increase. So it'll stand out a little bit more than just a very small text. For the phone here, we're going to give it a margin top of five pixels just to move it down a little bit. And the actual phone number will again align to the right because we want it to go all the way to the right of the edge of the design. And we'll give the bottom padding of zero so it's actually right there at the bottom so it's not uh, pushed up in any way. Right next to or right below the phone number, I should say, we have this we deliver message and it's going to be in green just to stand out. And the text align will align it again to the right, similar to the phone number. So the phone number and the words we deliver will align its right edges. 
And just to align it with the phone number exactly, we'll go ahead and give the padding right for that we deliver message. We'll give it padding right of 15 pixels. Let's go ahead and save that and take a look at what our website looks now. Well, looks much better. Look at this. Now, when we roll over, we could see that there's a background color that shows up on every one of those things. And so is the show up on the phone number, which I'm actually not so crazy about, but we'll probably fix that later. And we deliver, as you can see, is also aligned very nicely with our phone number. And you may or may not have realized, but since we put all the IDs in the right places, this should now work. Then when we squeeze the browser, and obviously this is still something that is going to need to be fixed, that's way too low at this point. But if we squeeze the browser and get to our collapsible menu state, when we click on this, the menu will show up. And it's a real menu and selectable. And we click on it again, it will go away. And all of that is really done completely out of the box. We really didn't write any code to do this. This is something that Bootstrap already provides. Now, one thing besides, this is obviously needs to be styled a little bit better. But the one thing we do need to style right away is this collapse button. And that's exactly where we're going to pick it up in the part two of this lecture.